So we put out a question on Twitter and on the Knowledge Center to try and find out what kind of maps people are making with FME. So the first example got Dimitri really excited. Um, so this is Owen Powell in the UK. So he wanted to make something that replicates the first British road atlas, which came out in 1675, but do that all in FME and sort of automate that process instead of having to do it manually for the whole country. Um, so yeah, this, this was all done in FME using the Ordnance Survey data. Um, and this was showing a section of the route from London to Banbury. So they've used FME to create different panels that shows you along the route as it goes. So they used the shortest pathfinder to find the route from London to Banbury, like the quickest route there, all along A roads. So it visits through towns and villages, whereas if you were doing a motorway, it would probably just bypass all of that and it wouldn't be as exciting to look at. Um, so what this map is doing is not showing you everything in that panel. It's only pulled out features that intersect with the road route. So you can do that using the feature reader. So you only end up reading in the features that you want, which in this case are the features that intersect the route. So all of these different panels were made using a tiler and then scaled and offset to make them in the right way and give them that kind of scrolly look um, to them. And then also able to work out which towns are along the way. So you've got these sections of the map where it says to a place. So you've got to Bushine, Northward and Ruslip. Um, so basically any, any towns that were along that route, they've all been concatenated just with a comma to make that fit into the map nicely. Um, so that was all styled as well, output through the Mapnik rasterizer. So if you're interested in reading out what actually went on in this workspace in a little bit more detail. So I put the link to his WordPress on the slide before. So you can go and check that out. There's loads of cool maps on there that he's been making. And then another couple of examples of maps that Owen's made with FME. So on the left hand side, we've got this sort of like mountain profiles. So FME was used to sort of take the DTMs of these mountains, create a profile, turn them into polygons so they're flat on the map and then style them that way. So you can actually see the mountains as if they've been sort of like pushed over and flattened onto the map, which is pretty cool. And then on the right hand side, you've got oceans. So you've got the waves as if you were kind of looking at the sea. So this was a, or changed from the Cloudifier transformer. So this is one that he's published up to FME Hub. So if anybody out there makes these custom transformers and thinks they'd be useful, you can publish these up to FME Hub so other people can download them. So when you're in Workbench and you start typing and you can download those transformers, I think they're a bluey, no, a green color. The normal ones are blue. Those ones are transformers that people have put up on the hub. So this one is taking straight lines across and then just turning them into arcs. And there's a bit of variance and randomness in here to make the waves not look neat and uniform. And then another example here, so Holly from Sterling Geo in the UK as well, has also been working with Ordnance Survey data. So this one is styled more traditionally as the Ordnance Survey would typically style it. So they provide styling files with all of their products that they give out, so the vector products. And then you can go in there, pick out sort of what kind of lengths, not lengths, widths of lines you might need, what the colors are, convert those into FME colors and then put those into the workspace so that FME can style it correctly. So in these examples, so Sterling's part of a sort of a utility, they inspect substations and power lines and things like that. So a lot of maps needed to be made for the engineers so they know where they're going out in the field. So these requests used to come in, it would be pretty quiet for a while and then you'd end up with like five at once. So having FME to be able to just automate that process cut out the vector products and then supply it makes it a lot easier. So this is the workspace that creates those. You can see a feature reader here. So like with Owen's workspace, this is only reading in features that are needed for the area of interest or that intersect that. And then they can be clipped to the area of interest that's provided, uh, splitting these out all into their different features because you're gonna wanna style road separately to a railway track or to a river. And then instead of manually setting each style in the Mapnik rasterizer, 
you can use attributes to set the styling. So if you need to do it different styling by uh, on a feature by feature basis. In this example, they've used an attribute value mapper to take all the different sort of variances within a road, for example, you might have big roads, small roads, main roads, motorways, and then they all need different styling rules. So in the attribute value mapper, those rules have been manually set. So every time this workspace runs, the Mapnik rasterizer can set the right style to the right feature, basically. And then for the next examples we got, um, I was actually pretty tempted to not credit this slide. I figured putting a picture of a map on here with a bike in it would give it away who this has come from. And as soon as we put the question out on Twitter, everyone's like, oh, Hans, Red Geographics. So, yep, he came through and sent some maps, map examples through to us. So the one on the right is probably the simplest um, example we had. So these were a lot of geo tiffs that he mosaic together and then was cutting out different sections to go on these signs. So we think in the end, FME ended up cutting out over 500 different areas of maps to go on these signs. And then the image on the left. So the base map was actually produced from different software, but what FME has done is been able to work with the vectors on top of that. So you can see some of the things on here. So this is for workers who need to go out and hammer sort of posts in the ground to direct people who are hiking. So you can see, it took me a while to spot it, but around the colored line, sort of like the bottom left, going diagonally from bottom right to top, there's like a black outline around there. So buffered the section of the route that they're gonna be working on. And the black dots are added in for the start and the end nodes. And then you've also got the roots colored. So you've got a orange root, a red root and a blue root. And you can see those colors sort of go on the same route together where those roots overlap, which is good. And then another example that he sent through. So this ties back to what Dimitri was talking about earlier. So for generalization. So you can see the small black numbers along the main routes. So the original data for this was having marks every 100 kilometers for along the roads. But when you change the scale of the map and you need to make it a lot bigger, you don't want those roads cluttered a lot with it, like a number every 100 meters. So instead, FME was used to sort of generalize this and then have a marker every five kilometers instead. Um, it was also used to add some labels to this map. So for highway exits, junctions and rest stops. So for things like those, you need to make sure they're on the right side of the road. So if you've got a rest stop and you're driving along one way on these big roads, you can't normally just turn across the traffic. So you need to make sure that if you say desperate for the toilet while you're driving along, you want to know that you're coming up to the rest stop on the right side of the road. Um, and then as well for finding these, uh, for finding the nearest highway, um, he was doing some calculations on the azimuth and then adding a rotation attribute at a 90 degree offset so that, that would get labeled right. And then another example that was sent through from Joanna. So these came through on the Knowledge Center. So if anybody saw that question posted, these maps were posted in response to that. So you can see on the left hand side, there's a lot of labels on the map. And she was saying that it was hard to know or how hard to label it correctly. So you didn't end up with too many labels grouped together in one place. You wanted it to be readable and actually make sense. And then the example on the right hand side is a little bit different because we've added tick marks along the border of the map and a scale bar as well. Uh, so this is just another example of that from a workspace template that she sent through. Um, so what this is doing is similar to the other people who have used the Mapnik rasterizer and added that styling in. Instead of setting that styling manually through like attribute value mappers or maybe just in the Mapnik rasterizer directly, all that styling information was kept in the CSV file which contains all the different colors and the priority of the features. So that when this gets read in to FME, you can use a schema mapper to add that attribution on top of those features. And then the Mapnik rasterizer can use those values to style the map. Uh, so add the tick boxes around the outside was a bit more involved. So there's a private parameter set up to work out sort of the size of the map that was going and then it can work out what the tick marks need to be and how many of them need to be on the map 
Um, so that then has to loop through the minimum sort of side of the map, keep going until it hits the big one. Um, so those ones are a little bit more advanced, um, but you can still make great maps as shown with a Mapnik rasterizer through here. So if anybody has FME maybe for work, but they wanna take it home and play with, we're doing FME home use licenses now. So this was announced at the user conference back in May in Vancouver. So you can go online, you can submit a request to get a home use license and then go home and then ruin your family's life because you're gonna be stuck on your computer all the time playing with FME. 